Okay, ladies and gentlemen, sorry for the slight delay while well, with the drug testers, Varda, UCAD, yeah, and I'm still going. Still, there's more. <laughs> um, successful defence, IBF mandatory defence, 20 and 0, 20 knockouts, um, another great night, a big learning experience for Anthony Joshua in and out of the ring, uh, particularly over the last two weeks. It's been uh, very stressful, very up and down, and uh, before I pass on to the floor, I just want to talk about quickly the pressure that this young man's under when he fights. I don't think any of us really take it into consideration. Just 19 <coughs> fights and always the expectancy of the country on his shoulders. Always a packed stadium, 78,000 in there tonight, just incredible scenes. And uh, I'm very proud of his performance and, and uh, defending his world titles under such great pressure. So I'm going to open it to the floor. Thank you. Anthony, did you uh, feel that pressure to deliver the big knockout? Um, naturally, okay, no pressure, but naturally, as a fighter, you will always have that instinct that you want to hurt your opponent. Um, but what was good is that from everything that like my coaches taught me, like even with Takam, I see he was hurt a few times in that fight, but I didn't want to go steaming in. I didn't want to look for the knockout. I wanted it to come naturally, and we were slowly, slowly, slowly getting there. So I don't feel the pressure anymore. Because I know sometimes that could lead to my downfall if I'm not careful. Thank you. How, how's the nose now that it affect you? Huh? So obviously you have boxed out your mouth for a bit, that's presumably just the nose rather than because you're somewhere. The thing is with the old uh, head, but you don't see it coming, and it's harder than a punch because it's just like um, bone on bone, you know that crunch? But Rob, Tony, Max, Celts, they all done a good job in the corner, you know. Um, control the bleeding, but it was just getting through that round because the ref don't give you a cut, you know what I mean? You really want 10 minutes to kind of get yourself together, have a little breather and clean yourself up, but he's like carrying on fighting and it's experience, it happens in a fight, so um, I got through the round, they cleaned me up and it, just, and it was just managing it through the rounds, not taking silly shots because it, it was ready to start gushing with blood, but they managed it well in the corner. Did it stop your breathing? Uh, a little bit, a little bit, but you all, listen, in a fight you'll always find a way to breathe, you've got your mouth or your nose, so I just was breathing through my mouth a bit. Anthony, you, you, you know, you've, you've got the victory clearly, but you're very critical very often of your own performances. Yeah. How do you mark yourself tonight in that performance? Uh, there's always a few things I could do better, you know, where I'm coming from, and, um, but that's experience as well, which, which makes things easier. But I think with, with someone like Carlos, I said from the start, like, short fighters are always tougher, I think, you know, they've got no neck, they can tuck up, and they've been dealing with guys my height their whole life, so they know how to roll shots and get out of the way of punches. And um, I'm used to dealing with guys my height, which I was dealing with training for Kula, so it's just a bit, a bit more tricky, you know, but we got there in the end. Certain things I would have been doing five fights ago, I would have, you know, could have been quite dangerous. I wasn't making those mistakes this fight around, so it's good. I'm improving fight by fight. And um, I'm just, honestly, I'm happy that <coughs> to rate the performance, I'm happy that the, that the win secured and uh, we're moving on. And so, do you think the ref was right to stop the fight? And also, also was it a bit of a funny ending, sort of, a few jeers from the crowd and not... Um, sort of what did you think? What did you think? Because I, I don't care if I if I spark him out if it goes 12 rounds if the ref ends it. So, it's always down to the, um, uh, the people who are watching's opinion. So what did you think about the stoppage? Uh, that's what I think. I think that's where Eddie said that the pressure comes because people want to see my foot, like um, the fighters I fight unconscious every time. And, um, but I was delivering. I put him down. I hurt him now and again. I slashed both of his eyes. It was bleeding. If you see my shorts and boots, it's, it's, they, they're pure white. And now they're, they're pink, filled with blood. And, but I do understand people want to see him unconscious, and I was trying. And the ref's job is to let the fighter live on another day. Do you know where I'm coming from? It's just interesting because Takam was showing certain signs where he was showing the ref that his eyes are like nearly hanging off. Do you know what I mean? From the cut, they were deep. And um, when the ref stopped it, he showed he wanted to continue fighting. But that's a fighter's instinct. And as I said, for me, 12 rounds is fine, a stoppage is fine. And then, as I said to, to Gareth, I'm happy I got the win and I can kind of crack on.
you spoke about wanting to move on from the Klitschko fight. Do you think that fight, that performance does that? Sorry? You spoke about wanting to move on from the Klitschko fight. Do you think that does that? Yeah, yeah. And it was a completely different fight to the Klitschko fight. So, as I said, it's like I can't live off of that Klitschko fight and sit back in my in my armchair and what a great fight with Klitschko. Because guys like Takam are completely different styles. So I just had to put Klitschko's victory aside and just focus on Pulev and then Takam and all the other issues that come with, with boxing and um, if I don't put it behind me it could be a curse, do you know what I mean? So I've just moved on and that's why like Takam's done now, you know, and now I focus on what's next. How difficult was it to make that, the change of opponent to deal with it? Uh, I think like Pulev, no disrespect, but you know from like a competitive nature me talking I think I would have been able to have been a little bit more effective you know see when to, I don't know what round Takam went down in four, four, four. Four. but maybe Pulev wouldn't have made it through the four Takam was as I said shorter he knows how to ride that right hand and, um, yeah that's what made it a bit interesting with the change of opponent I just knew that he deals with guys like me every day in the gym because he's naturally the shorter style and I don't deal with guys like Takam every day in the gym. So it's just going to be a little bit more difficult. But as I said with him, certain mistakes that I could have been making five years, five fights ago, I'm not going to make any more against someone like Takam because all they want to do is now one shot. You seem to be head hunting a little bit, just, just aiming your jab for his head and obviously he was, he was, yeah. he was great at the movement. That you, you, you didn't seem to be getting your rhythm because of that? Yeah. So with him, I think, Two things, well three things. When I hurt him, don't rush in because as you said he knows how to move his head. Um, bust him up with that jab, you saw his eyes, you know. Then I started thinking, okay, started hurting him to the head, then I started throwing the jab to the body a bit more, that right hand to the body sinking it in. But also, um, why I don't want to rush is because he's he's what's he had, 30 something fight, mm. something like that, so quite experienced and he knows I'm gonna pay he knows his his durability, so he knows he's going to stay in the ring for 10 rounds, 11 rounds, however long he could last, and just try and land that one sweet haymaker. And you'll know, in the heavyweight division, that can change a fight, and um, then belts go back to France, and we've got to start again. Anthony, you talked about um, sparring people like Benga, who have a similar build to uh, yeah. Carlos. Do you draw on that kind of experience and those people around you in, in that short period where obviously you had to change your opponent? 100%, 100%, yeah, 100%. Because that's what I mean. I have to go way back to like 2014 to think of guys I sparred like Taka. That's what I mean. It's not an everyday thing I'm sparring. Like, I'm sparring bigger guys, big guys, um, every other week. Because there's not so many shorter heavyweights, you know? So, yeah, I had to draw back to that time I was sparring Bango and other times. Rob done really well, got in other sparring partners, um, which were good. And other than that, that's, I just knew it was going to be a bit more difficult than someone I knew I could outbox and you know slip certain shots and stuff. He was doing the slipping and making it difficult for me to land shots. Do you enjoy that challenge, of that tactical, where you have to do something different? Where do you sit in the, in the arena? Do you sit in the press box? Yeah. yeah. Do you see me talking to him? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's the competitive nature telling him, yeah. come on, like, I love it, I enjoy it. It's it seems to take you a while to do that sometimes, though. The first four rounds you sort of work him out and then you, you seem to relax a bit and start fight for That's it, game of chess. You watch their next move, what they're about, you feel a little shot, oh, that jab's a little bit sneaky, you can't get caught that again. And then you just kind of get into your rhythm. Then Rob said, I think in round eight, oh, don't get carried away, <laughs> you know, because he's waiting for that one shot and, that, and, and it can change your fight. Um, so he brought me back down to, to reality and um, just focus, focus, focus. And I do enjoy it. It's, it's just the competitive nature in me. Um, he hit me with a jab, I'm going to hit you with a jab. And then you just, you just wink at him and let him know that I'm one step ahead. Did you feel the additional weight at all? No. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> and did no. you think the headbutt was intentional? Or no, 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 no. He's a short guy. He went under, rolled a shot, come up, and. Um, I'm going to speak from a positive point of view. He comes to fight, he tries to roll the shot, come up, boom, head butt. We cracked on. Do you know what I mean? I'm going to cry about it. We move on. What was that ring walk like? <laughs> what was it like? <laughs> <laughs> no, I it. 
no, no yeah, we wanted to let the um, fans sing the <laughs> ring walk song. <laughs> yeah, it would be a nice yeah. change. Yeah, yeah. I called Eddie Face over the yeah. 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 Don't play <laughs> 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 nah, but listen, it was good, it was different. It was different, it was good. Um, but no stress, no stress, no stress. We still got 10 rounds in, blood, you know. A little bit, of, like, some good action, and we got the win. So, music, no music, the job was still complete.